Welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Krishna. So, Dr. Krishna, we have this video series. It's called uh, Talking with Docs, where basically we talk with docs. <laughs> And on today's episode, we were branching out to anesthesia. Dr. Krishna is an anesthetist. He's going to talk to us about the different types of anesthetic. And then we're going to show a little video of actually him performing an anesthetic. So let us start with, and I have a lot of patients who ask me about this, the spinal anesthetic. A lot of my patients are really scared of this. Sure. So can you please tell us what it is and how, how it works? Okay. So a spinal anesthetic is an injection in the lower back. It's a combination of a free freezing medication, which is local anesthetic, and a long-acting painkiller, which is morphine. Um, basically, the freezing medicine makes the patient uh, numb from like the waist down, and a surgery can be conducted under that. When the freezing medicine wears off, which will be after the surgery is done, uh, the, the painkiller kicks in and essentially gives, reduces the amount of pain medications the patient will need for about 18 to 24 hours after the surgery. So it helps reduce the amount of painkillers that are needed. So this is commonly an anesthetic that we use for total hip replacements and total knee replacements. Now, my patients commonly ask, does it hurt? Um, so it's generally, it's not, it's not a particularly painful procedure. We put some freezing for the skin first before we conduct the, uh, uh, place the medication in the spinal space. And that actually is the most painful part most people find. Then it's a bit of an awkward pressure in the back. And usually people are not that uncomfortable from the procedure itself. Okay. I got a couple of questions. How long is the needle and where does it go when it goes into my back? Um, so it goes into the lower back. So essentially, if you can imagine your spinal cord runs down and then there's a space that continues below the spinal cord in the lumbar region of the back. So it's just in the lower back here. Um, Essentially, we're injecting the medication into the space below the spinal cord. Okay. The needle is quite long, but it's a very, very fine gauge needle. So it's almost like an acupuncture uh, gauge of a needle. And essentially, it is long, but it doesn't go all the way into the back. It just goes in about that far. Okay. We talk a lot about risks and benefits of things. So when it comes to a spinal, a lot, there obviously are some inherent risks that are very low. And people always ask, can I be paralyzed by a spinal anesthetic? So what are the risks? Okay. So I, wanna, I mean, you said risks and benefits. So why don't I just share the benefits as well? Sure. So the main benefits from a spinal anesthetic is, first of all, that you get better quality pain control from the anesthetic as opposed to a general anesthetic. Because first of all, you wake up and you're frozen. And then afterwards, you have this long-acting painkiller that helps reduce the pain over the first day. Okay. Um, it also helps improve uh, circulation, so it reduces uh, blood clots in the legs, uh, which is a, a, a complication that can happen from this type of surgery. And also, people often feel better when they wake up because they haven't needed a general anesthetic, so they get less of a hangover type feeling Got in it. the immediate post-operative period. They're often not as drowsy, they're a little more alert and sharp, and generally in the first few hours after surgery, they're often less nauseous. So in terms of the risks, um, there are a few risks, but it's generally a very safe anesthetic, and it's actually the main form of anesthesia that we use for this type of surgery and a number of other types of surgery. And generally, an anesthesiologists prefer this, and when patients experience this type of anesthetic, they tend to prefer it as well. Okay. Um, so the risks include, um, first of all, uh, the, the severe complications that we're very worried about would be like nerve damage. Nerve damage, uh, permanent nerve damage is about 1 in 10,000 risk. This is usually not paralysis. It's okay. uh, uh, some sort of uh, partial uh, nerve injury that might affect one of your legs or you know, one part of the leg, and it'll be usually a numbness, okay. maybe some form of weakness. Often it's transient, but then it can, like, the risk becomes less if it's uh, permanent. Okay. There is a risk of bleeding in the back, which could cause paralysis or infection in the back, which if they got to a very late stage of before they're diagnosed, that can cause paralysis as well. Those are exceptionally rare complications. Okay. Some people can also get a headache from a spinal. It's pretty uncommon in the population getting a hip and knee replacement surgery though. Okay, so have you ever seen someone get paralyzed from this? Uh, I d no, I have not. Okay. So it's very rare, it's, but it's it very can rare. happen. It's possible that someone, could, someone like myself could go their entire career without ever having that as an issue. Okay, so here's another question I get. So let's say I want to have a baby and I'm going to get an epidural. Mm -hmm. Is it the same thing as an epidural, a spinal anesthetic? Um, so it's a good question and an interesting uh, situation as well. <laughs> well, it's, hypo um, it's hypothetical. Yeah, okay. Uh, so they're, they're similar in that they're both causing you to have a freezing uh, numbness in like the belly or legs down. 
Uh, the, there's a bit of a technical difference from the anesthesiologist's perspective in that with an epidural, we're leaving a little narrow gauge tube in the back, which lets us continuously give medications in case we don't know the duration of effect. So when we're, we use spinal anesthetics because often they're, um, they work more reliably than an epidural uh, because the medication is denser, so we get a more dense freezing medication effect from it. Uh, but the thing about a spinal is that it's a single dose of medication with a fixed duration of action, about three hours. Uh, with an epidural, if we don't know, someone in labor, for example, mm -hmm. they might be in labor for 8, 10, 12 hours, we're not sure. So we want to be able to top them up, give them more medication if needed. Okay. That's the main difference between the two. So the main difference is the spinal is a one-shot thing, goes in, yeah. come out, and the epidural is an indwelling thing that stays in there for a period of time. Continuously giving medication. Okay. I have other patients that say, hey, I don't want to hear anything. I want to be totally out. I want to be completely unaware during the surgery. Is that possible with a spinal anesthetic? Absolutely. So what we do is we give the spinal anesthetic to ensure that there is no sensation below the waist. Um, but we give intravenous medications to keep the patient sedated or essentially sleeping. So how I like to describe this to people is that you're most likely not going to be aware at all of what's happening during the case. However, if for some reason you happen to be aware, which can happen on occasion, usually people don't mind and they don't care. The anesthesiologist is there the entire time, and if you're uncomfortable in any way, they're there to help make you comfortable, so they'll give you more sedation to increase your sedation and sleepiness. Um, sometimes I describe this as a taking a nap in front of the TV. You might hear something happening in the background, but people don't care. They're quite comfortable and they're happy to just kind of doze off there. I like naps in front of the TV. Yeah, you're right. Okay, naps anywhere work. <laughs> All right, so would you mind if we watched you do one? Sure, sure. Okay, so absolutely. let's go watch Dr. Krishna mm -hmm. do a spinal anesthetic. Thank you very much for coming on the no show. Problem. We were going to get Bradley me. Cooper, but turns oh. out he knows Jack about anesthesia. Oh, okay. So we got you instead. <laughs> thank it wasn't a good second runner up. Let's go watch. Dr. Krishna, thank you very much for demonstrating this procedure for us. No problem. And I'd like to thank the patient for giving her consent to show us how a spinal anesthetic is uh, performed. And hopefully this will alleviate a lot of anxiety that people have before they get their spinal anesthetic. Okay, so we've, we've completed our safety checklist. We have our monitors on. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give you some relaxing medicine, okay? okay. Just to help kind of, you're not going to sleep from this medicine, it's just going to help you calm down a little bit, okay? okay. Take away a little bit of the stress. Uh, is your IV on this side? That's not. Here, it's on this Can side. You, right. you want to do yeah. like 1.5? 1.5? Okay. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean your back. Okay, okay it's going to be cold on your back here, okay? okay. So cold. So just sterilizing the skin here to make sure this is a clean procedure. And sorry, I'm just going to pull this down a little bit there. Sorry. Okay. All right. Now it's just going to take us a minute to get everything set up here. Okay. Just keeps everything sterile. going to move this a tiny bit. Okay. Okay. So we've, we're all set up here. The first thing we're going to do is freeze the skin. Okay. So this is a little pinch and then it's going to sting as the freezing medicine goes in for the skin. Okay. So ready? One, two, three. Ouch. Okay. You're going to feel a bit of a sting now. You okay? So that's usually the worst part, okay? So now you, you'll feel some pressure. Okay. What are you aiming for there, Dr. Krishna? Okay, so basically, I'm in the correct spot now, actually. Essentially, what we're doing is we're going through a few layers of ligaments here. And then we're finding the spinal canal where there's some fluid that comes out. And that tells me that we're in the right spot. And now this is the medication that I'm going to be injecting. What is the medication? So the medication is a combination of local anesthetic, which is a freezing medication, similar to what you get at the dentist. And uh, a painkiller, morphine, which is a 24-hour format of the medication. 
And so that essentially gives pain relief for when uh, the, the freezing medication wears off, which is after the surgery. Okay, so we're done the spinal anesthetic part there. Dr. Christian, that's all there was to it? That's all there is to it. So it's fairly fast acting. Okay, that was really cool to get to see a spinal anesthetic. Thanks for doing that. And if you guys like this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. And Kathy, thank you for filming. We never really thank Kathy for filming. Thank Thanks, you. Kathy. See you next time. You're welcome.